the Network Engineering Video Blog. I'm your host, Michael Crane. Well, today we're going to be uh, working on the Juniper M5. Uh, we're going to install this um, four port, 100 base T uh, PIC card. PIC stands for Physical Interface Card. Uh, we're going to stick it in uh, slot 3 here. And if you notice, uh, Juniper counts backwards, so, uh, and this is a real stumbling block sometimes. It doesn't go 0, 1, 2, 3, it goes 3, 2, 1, 0. So anyway, we're going to set this, plug this guy in. We'll talk a little bit about the online offline button. We'll set up the management interface for SSH. And, um, and that's about it. So this should be a pretty quick video. Uh, we'll also uh, uh, look at the uh, network drawing a little bit so I can show you where this is going to go into our network and how we're going to set it up. And uh, so let's get started. So whenever you're plugging something into a live router, you need to make sure that, that um, you do this during a maintenance window or that, it's, that if something bad happens, it's not going to affect other traffic. In our case, we don't have anything on it. This is brand new. Um, you, if you plug this thing in uh, with a powered off, when you boot the router, it should bring it online automatically. If it's powered on, I believe, and we'll check this here in a minute, if it's powered on and we go ahead and, and plug this interface card into the router, It should stay offline, and it does that so it, it won't affect anything else if there's other live traffic running on this. Um, it should stay offline, and the only way to bring it online is either to use a command on the CLI, or you can also just hit this this button right here, which is underneath the slot the the, the pick card, and. I think you have to hold it in for a few seconds. Yeah, so I held it in about four or five seconds. You can see it went red. So that brought the card online. And like I said, you can also do this um, yeah, from the command line. Also, when you go to remove a card, these cards are hot swappable. You can just pop these guys out and pull it in and out. And it should be okay. But if you want to do it the right way, you uh, you should always take the card offline first by by just hitting this and holding this button right here. And as you can see, the status light went out. And that that that's a clean. That's a better way of um, of removing the the card from the slot. Um, so uh, let's go look at the uh, the CLI. Okay, so I'm already consoled into the into the Juniper M5 router. As you can see, this is the uh, default configuration that where we left it in one of the previous videos where we set it back to factory defaults. Uh, as you can see, there's not much in it. And so uh, um, I'm going to be following uh, this document right here. And, and this says it's for the MX5. Um, the document for the M5 is is unreasonably long. Um, this is why I think this video will be kind of nice because I'm going to uh, uh, concentrate all this stuff down and, and into the just what you need to do to get it set up. And okay, so uh, one of the things it doesn't talk about in that in that document though is is uh, if you're familiar with Cisco, you, I like to see console messages pop up on the console. Uh, so if I do something, um, I, I can see, you know, like insert a card or do a, or insert a pick. I want to know that the router recognizes it. So to do that, it's, uh, the command is monitor, um, start, and then messages. And to stop it, it's a uh, it's just the monitor stop messages so okay so we've installed our pick and we want to go look at it and um, so one of the things I like to do is do a show um, 
uh, I think it's chassis hardware. All right, and it, it shows basically everything that's installed. And and here is our pick. All right, it's um, fast Ethernet. It's in slot three right here, and it's on um, FPC zero, which is the slot that it's in. So zero slash three. All right, so that's good. And let's go look at the status of our of our pick. So we're going to do it's a show chassis. I forget. It's a, a pick. Okay, so I'm looking at. I see pick right here. So pick. Um, question mark. Uh, pick slot. We know it's in three. Question mark. FPC slot, we know is zero, and uh, yeah, it looks like it's already online. I thought we took it offline, but um, oh, yep, I I actually had rebooted the uh, the router earlier and it brought it back online. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take it offline so I can show you that command. So I just went and held that online offline but button for about five seconds or four seconds. I forget. I, I haven't counted it, but and you can see it's uh, it's taken it offline uh, somewhere in this line of um, oh here it is FRU power off. Okay. So and it's got reasons. You can look up all this stuff and, and what it means, but but we don't really care. So let's do our other command, um, the show chassis pick, and as you can see, it stayed offline. Now this is a good state where you can pull it out. You can also do a, uh, it's a request uh, chassis uh, pick um, online, right? And then pick slot number three, right? FPC slot zero enter and and it brings it up so you can do this if you're you know working remotely you can take these these picks on and offline pretty easily or if you're sitting right next to it like I am you can just hit the button and then you don't have to remember that long command so anyway so our cards back online and and life is good okay so Looking at, we're going to start uh, doing the initial config on the Juniper router. Um, and like I said, I'm using this document here for the MX5. And and they're, it's basically the same thing as M5. Anyway, um, they have some good um, information up here you can read. Um, it's just asking you that what information we're going to collect. Uh, so we're going to need the name which is basically a host name, domain name, uh, IP address for the management port, uh, default router, DNS, and uh, root password. And we've already done the password, so we should be good to go. And uh, we did the password in a previous video. So uh, I'm going to just kind of scroll through this. But before we get started, um, if you've been watching and keeping up with my videos, you know I like to make drawings so this is kind of shy I know it looks very busy uh, but I went ahead and I added the Juniper M5 and uh, I'm gonna call it the New York Gateway 1 and and it's going to be connected to the service provider and um, and then to the the Dallas Gateway so way way back my and um, gosh, it was one of the first videos I did. We looked at networking routers together, and this is what's going to be in the core network, and um, in a telecom environment. And and of course, it'll be in your core network too if you have multiple offices spread spread all over the the nation. So. That's basically what I'm doing. We got the Dallas office here. We got New York office, and then Los Angeles and Fort Worth, and and uh, 
and I know I'd have router three and one here, but um, th this is kind of the idea I'm going going to go with um, for our uh, demonstration purposes. So I added the New York Gateway, and uh, we've got the Dallas Gateway, the New York Gateway. They're going to be connected via um, a service provider. So, uh, and this will probably be I. At first, I have IP in here, which is, you know, pretty standard. Um, but um, uh, to begin with, I'm just going to run a wire in between these guys, which will, will be almost like having a layer 2 um, service. Okay, so like an Ethernet, Metro Ethernet or something like that. Maybe we could even put a, you know, a MEF surface, service. Metro Ethernet forum is what MEF stands for. And, uh, you know, something like that. But basically, it's just going to be a wire for our for our uh, demonstration purposes. And so, uh, so yeah, so I gave it, there's a host name. Here's a management IP address. Uh, here's a management physical port it's going to be on. And uh, what else were they asking for in here? Um, uh, default router, we don't know yet. Uh, this guy right here this the Cisco is going to be the DNS server so we will want to put his dot one address in there and I actually haven't grown that yet we'll have to do that in another video but we'll just keep that in the back of our mind for right now we're not going to go ahead and add it yet and um, let's see address I think I think that's it so uh, anyway that's what we got going here and and as we start growing the, the Juniper router, I'll start adding to our network right here. And uh, this will be our New York office. This will be our Dallas office. And, and we'll just keep adding to it until we um, uh, get us a nice big network. Okay? So um, just going along, uh, you know, it's just CLI, config. If you watched the previous videos on Juniper, you know how to log into it by now. Um, okay, so we're going to set the system host name, and um, we're just going to call it uh, set, oop, config, and uh, set system host, host name as uh, New York Gateway 1, all right, and um, we're going to set, okay, we're not going to do the... Uh, We've already set the um, password in a previous video. Um, this is a user account for super user. We, we, we're not going to do that. It, it's already got one set up, and, and SSH should work. We'll, we'll test that. Set the domain name. Okay, so uh, set system domain name, and that is going to be the network engineering... Uh, v blog that's a very long domain name all right and um okay we're not going to have a backup router right now the dns server we'll we'll add that in later um it's at the root authentication password by entering clear text or an ssh public key we've, we've already done this i i'm not exactly sure i why it's asking for two i guess I guess if it, oh, it probably doesn't want you to log in. Oh, okay, username. Yeah, it probably doesn't want you to log in as a root. That's probably a security no-no. But um, yeah, we don't care right now. We, we'll, we'll tweak the security later on. Um, okay, we're not going to add SSH key. Uh, routing options, static route. Uh, we're not going to add any static route. Uh, oh, okay, so it says set system services telnet. Yeah, yeah we don't want that. Set, we're going to do set system services, and we are going to do SSH. All right. Yeah, don't don't use telnet. That's a big security hole. And uh, display configuration to verify it's correct. Okay, so let's do that. Let's do a show. And, uh, okay, here's our services. And host name, domain name. Yep. Oh, interfaces. Did we did we miss that? 
set routing options. Oh, we did miss that. Okay, this is the management interface. And um, so it's set interfaces FXP0, unit 0, family INET. Uh, address is going to be 192.168.10.77, I do believe. Um, where is that drawing? Oh, 1.77. Oh, that's right. It's This is going to be an out-of-band thing. That's going to be on a management network. 1.77. And... With the Juniper, you got to put in a bit mask, and so 255.255.255.0 is um, uh, correlates to 24 bits. All right, and if you don't know that, I did a previous video way, way back in the beginning on um, on how to how to calculate that. But I'm sure if you Google it, there's millions of things online. Okay, so uh, so that show command was pretty helpful. Uh, okay, and uh, is that it? Uh, show command. Oh, we got to commit it. And that's that's it. Okay, so we're gonna test our um, our uh, SSH here, and and we can go straight to the ping. But I went ahead and opened up a putty. Um, new config window, put in the IP address, gave it a name, and let's open it up and see if it works. Oh, and it doesn't work. There's a very good reason. There, we have a layer one problem, and layer one will get you every time. Okay, so I plugged in the um, Ethernet cable. Fixed layer one, everything looks like it's up. Let's try restarting this. Restart. Uh, yep, so it's logging in as user root and juniper1 is my password. All right, looks like we're logged in. Even lo it showed us logging in. We are in. So now we can uh, ditch the console cable. Okay, so that's about it for this video. I wanted to keep this one uh, short and sweet. Um, you know, just something to reference if you need something to set one of these up real quick. And um, so if you like this video, uh, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, uh, leave them in the comments below and I will try to answer them the best I can. And I'll see you next time.